Is it a science? Is it an art? Is it a craft? It's all three. Let's take a look at it. Teaching as a science. First of all, there is a body of research that says there are best practices. A body of research that say these types of strategies have been found to enhance learning, to enhance student achievement. There is a body of research. What you need to do, though, is a, as a well-informed educator, is to avoid the single study conclusions. Educational difference uh, research is a little different than medical research and other types of research in that human beings are not repeatable experiments. It's rare to come to a universal conclusion based on any one uh, study. So we look at a body of research related to teaching and learning and best practice. And yes, science and scientific methods inform our practice. Caveat, there's no such thing as the scientific method. There are many methods of science, all used to help us understand. We look at a body of research and research-based theory to inform our teaching practice, just like doctors look at a body of research and research-based theory to understand and inform their practice. Teaching is a science. Teachers are constantly experimenting. Every day you're seeing, how am I doing? Is it working? Is this too new technique working? You're trying and experimenting new techniques and you are observing your students like uh, Jane Goodall, observing monkeys in the field. You're constantly being a scientist. What you want to be careful with, however, there's no such thing as a formulaic teacher-proof curriculum. There's no such thing as a uniform approach that all teachers should take. Now, there are those who have tried to scientificize teaching, who have tried to make it teacher-proof, meaning that you follow these directions, this script explicitly, and by golly, teaching's going to happen. Some of the names include Benjamin Bloom, Roger Majors, Madeline Hunter, and even Charlotte Danielson. This cookie-cutter approach usually results in cumbersome types of instruction, a one-size-fit-all. Those who say all teachers must do it this way and must follow this script are ignorant of the body of research. Let me say that again. They are ignorant of the body of research on teaching and learning. So please do not be ignorant. Do not assume that all teachers should teach in the same way, that you evaluate lessons based on the Danielson criteria. That is ignorant. Don't be ignorant. You got me worked up. Sorry about that. Teaching is an art. See, I'm more mellow now. Teaching is an art. <laughs> Not all human beings are the same. You bring yourself into the teaching process. What works best for you? Now, what works best for me does not work for you. I don't want you to be miniature Dr. Johnsons. That would be a horrible thing. One is enough. Some would say one Dr. Johnson is too much. You have to develop your own talents, find the strategies that work for you, create lessons around what interests you. Yes, you can bring your interests. It's an art, all right? It's an art also in that you take these scientifically based strategies, you adopt and adapt them to your students, your teaching situation, your talents. There are a variety of research-based strategies out there. You cannot create the teacher by putting together little bits of research-based strategies. That's what Charlotte Danielson has tried to do. The effective teacher adopts and adapts the strategies that works best for him or her. Teaching is also a craft. A craft is a set of skills that have been mastered and refined over time. So it is a craft. We do not create finished products in our teacher preparation program. It is impossible to create a finished product. 
an undergraduate program or a graduate teacher preparation program, we create someone who's be who is able to begin to learn the art, the science, the craft of teaching. You are beginning to learn. We have prepared you to learn how to be a master teacher. That means you are going to have to get more knowledge, more skills. Once you've had experience in the classroom, the knowledge and the skills make more sense. Experience is necessary for becoming a master teacher, but it is not sufficient. Those people that think these fast-track teacher licensure programs are effective, throw them in the classroom, they've got a BS, BA degree in something else, and they'll just pick it up. These people are ignorant of the research on teacher education. A body of research says colleges of education work when you compare like populations. It works. Students learn more and teachers get higher rating. So experience is necessary, but it's not sufficient for becoming a teacher. These Teach for America programs, I'm highly suspicious. Would you have dentists for America, airline pilots for America, lawyers for America? Certainly not. We recognize that you need some knowledge and skills and mentoring to become that airline pilot, dentist, whatever. Why is it that working with human beings, the most important job there is, why do we think we just throw them in there, let them mess around, and they'll learn it on the job? That is crazy. Experience without knowledge results in teaching based on folklore and tradition. We've always done it this way, and that does not lead to growth. It is not a way to get new ideas, new research into the classroom. As well, experience without knowledge you have no context. You need to be able to put your experience and the new skills in some sort of theoretical context or else you are going to fall prey to the fad of the day. Some snake oil salesman comes through and says, this is the best thing, you must do this, here is the technique, pay me $10,000. Well, without the background knowledge, you're going to say, well, okay, that sounds good to me, duh. All right? So, knowledge is important in helping you to become a good decision maker. I'll leave you with this happy thought. And this isn't me. These are all people and studies I am citing. What's the most significant variable? It's not the neat program that you have. Teachers, you are the most significant variable in determining the quality of education. We want to improve education. We need to focus on the quality of teachers. Do they have the knowledge and the skills and the disposition to be successful? Thank you for putting up with my passion today.